although I would enjoy that. And I'm sure many of us would too. And how awesome would it be for this miracle, for this sign to occur at an event that we're all at? Jesus performed this sign at a wedding in Cana, which is about 20 miles from Galilee. A wedding in those times would last about a week, with wine being there throughout. This was not Jesus' wedding, nor was it a family member, but a friend, and he was just another guest there to celebrate with this couple. It was not expected for Jesus to provide anything for this wedding, but when they ran out of wine, he decided to step in, although it took a little bit of coaxing from his mother. Does it sound like any of you guys, or maybe your kids? I know that it takes coaxing for me. The miraculous part of the sign was not just turning the water into wine, but the amount of wine that was created, as well as that it was the best wine, and that it was being served at the end. Both of these signs were of God's abundant grace that would be shown throughout the signs that Jesus would perform throughout his life. We know that God's grace is for everyone, but it can be hard for us to truly grasp what grace is. Jesus changing water into the best wine to be served at this wedding is to show that God's grace is truly for everyone. We know we experience God's grace when we ask for forgiveness or when someone steps up and tells us about it, but what about all the other times in our lives? How about the times when we feel so far away from and then something happens that reminds us of God's presence. For example, how about when we're caught up in the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, running around, doing all our errands that we need to get done, or all the work we have to get done, and someone stops us and wants to have a true conversation with us, causing us to check and see how our life is really going. The people in our lives that make us stop and be present are one example of God's grace. We were not given life to be isolated and by ourselves, but instead to be in community with one another so that we can experience God's grace through others, as well as helping others to experience that grace. Just as we gather now to celebrate weddings with lots of people and lots of drinks, Jesus provided the way celebration with an abundance of wine so that they could finish that celebration. Jesus made those six jars that were 20 to 30 gallons each, and they were filled to the brim with the best wine you can imagine. The wine being in abundance helps us to illustrate how abundant God's grace truly is. The guests at the wedding were not only told about God's grace in this instance, but they were able to taste and see and feel it. Can you imagine having 180 gallons of wine at some celebration? To help you see how much that might actually be, 180 gallons is about 756 bottles of wine, which would mean it would take over a ton of grapes to make that much wine. So if each jug was 30 gallons, that means there was 126 bottles of wine per jug. Now I got the chance to kind of see what one of these jugs might have looked like when I went to Israel last year. And I'm going to go with, it's probably as big as round as if we put poinsettias all the way around the baptismal font and stood and tried to hug it. I mean, I couldn't even reach my arms halfway around it, is how big one of these jugs would have been. While the wedding feast, though, was being celebrated, they would start with the best wine and end with the wine that we might buy from that bottom shelf, since the guests wouldn't really be able to taste the difference by that time. But the wine that Jesus made was the best wine, and it was served last. How can that be that the best wine was served last? There was a chance that some guests would have not been able to drink the wine that was served first, depending on their social class. But now, everyone is getting to receive that best wine. Had the wedding actually run out of wine, it would have been a tragedy, because the celebration is to talk about a blessing and continue 
that blessing throughout. Just as we pray and celebrate with newly married couples for their blessing and for God's grace and their new found love and new family. The Gospel of John works hard to get the reader to see beyond what our eyes can see and into the deeper meaning of what is being said. John shares seven different signs, and the wedding at Cana is just one of them, and happens to be the first to help us truly see what the grace of God looks like. God's grace is overly abundant in more ways than we can imagine. In this epiphany season, we are celebrating the joys and the light that shines upon everyone. The fact that the signs occur at a wedding are essential. Because it means that all of the guests were able to experience God's grace. Not just the couple, but everybody. The stewards, as they poured out the wine into glasses that people never thought would be filled again, and they all were able to experience that. The first smell and the taste was for everyone, for all. And they were surprised at how good it was. All were able to respond to Jesus voice and know life and know that God's grace is for all. Anything that is in abundance can be hard to contain, no matter how hard we try, whether good or bad. Floodwaters are hard to retain, and abundance of snow can be hard to remove. Sometimes we grow in an overabundance of tomatoes or zucchini. We have abundance of toys. We have abundance of clothes. Some of us have abundance of shoes and abundance of many things that we have. And all of these things we can experience, with some of them causing us great turmoil and others bringing us great joy. God's grace is in an abundance that we sometimes try to push away, but never truly exceed. This abundance of grace has been, has been seen as having grace upon grace which is a true example of the incarnation of God's love. An experience of God's love and something to go out and testify about because God loves the whole world. God's love being shared with the whole, whole world is a true expression of joy in the epiphany season. What joys or surprises have you had this season or epiphanies? How will you share those epiphanies with other people? Have you seen God's grace happen through those epiphanies? Just as God's grace can show up in many ways, <coughs> as well as unexpected ways, our epiphanies and surprises and joys do the same. So keep an eye out for those epiphanies that will continue to happen in your life, as well as where God's grace is shared with you, and when you share God's grace.